Hey friends out there, this is Thursday, December 29th, 2022, and it's just about, oh, about uh, 5.47 here in the morning in Northern California, and as usual, I'll talk about a few things today. I hope everybody's doing as well as they can in a crazy-ass world run by money-loving, misery-inducing madmen. We'll add maniacal to that. But, you know, what I do, I try to remember, above all, what I really want to convey to people. You know, I always have to remind myself why, you know, why it's important. And it's really about the thing that we fear the most, and that's death, you know. And I hate this idea of death. I really do. And I think right-minded people all kind of hate the idea of death they certainly hate the idea of somebody they love a lot dying you know even if they say well I I, you know I don't care and you know I can deal with it I can handle my own demise in other words you know my own mortality (coughs) excuse me but they can't handle that of another or they really um, dread the idea the reality that they're probably going to have to endure that kind of grief and pain. So that brings me back to the message in Scripture. You see, this is why, you know, i got to attribute the vast majority of any sound wisdom I have to, to convey to people, to give, to offer, is from Scripture. I mean, it's the teachings of Christ. Some of them are hard to swallow, and I'm not sure they were written properly. I really am not. You know, like hating your family. You know, where would that come from? If you're going to follow me, you got to do this. It doesn't make any sense. Or if you put your hand to the plow and turn back. I mean, every every human is a lot alike. You know, we're all kind of fallible. We all screw up. I mean, we're an effed up species. So fundamentally, it's important to understand our origins and how we got effed up from the beginning. There could be countless stories being told out in just in the universe, but countable, I guess, in our galaxy, you know, with habitable planets, with a very similar looking creatures and and flora and fauna, the whole bit. Just a whole different story, a whole different history. Maybe they didn't screw up like our ancestors did and eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, this forbidden fruit, and disobey God, and incur the wrath, and giving dark powers a lot of, dark forces a lot of power, dark spirits that don't like us, just because we're made in the image and likeness of God. They don't like God. And the idea that, you know, we're these beautiful creatures with this incredible, virtually unlimited potential to evolve, into more and more godlike creatures. I mean, that bothers them. So they're haters. That's the spirit of this world. And it's sad. I mean, but and the job of the righteous and those that just want to be right-minded, decent, upright people that value their conscience, integrity, honor, their soul, basically, uh, they have a hard time. It's really tough. It's a tough road to hoe. It's a tough pill to swallow. Because it's counterintuitive when you see the light and you're enlightened and you say oh my god the way god sees things and the way the secular world sees things is entirely different and it's it's traumatic it's shocking and it's a it's a rude awakening for people but you know the way the world sees things listen friends life's hard enough with this thing called death hanging over our heads day in and day out without having these freaking monsters running the show but that's who runs it And the reason they run it is very, very, very simple. They are willing to subdue their own conscience. Whereby we falter at times, we're weak, and we may trample on our own conscience at times, but it doesn't make us evil, it makes us sinners, which we're all, all human beings, have a propensity to certain weaknesses and you know some of them are pretty ugly like lying Uh, untruthfulness is just not a it's just not a good quality end of story but yet we can all say you know I can remember as a kid I stole so I can't judge too harshly you know we all have to 
understand that uh, we're in this thing together. We're one family, one race. And we've got to care deeply about each other. This is the whole idea of love. Love to the point of loving your enemies, who are our enemies. It's these dark forces. So, I mean, look, if you, if you can live a life whereby even your enemies cannot at all justifiably, rightly detest you, okay, because they're going to hate you. That's a given. Like they hated Christ for no reason. Their, their authority was, was being threatened. In their, in their twisted, delusional minds, that were, those were the haters of Jesus. You got to read the stories for yourself. You got to read the New Testament and read about these people. But they're still alive and well. They're still here until the return of Christ, metaphor or otherwise. That's the state of affairs. That's the situation. That's the status quo. Dark forces are running the show. And all we can do is pray about it, okay? Because, look, it's tough being human. It really is. It's good. Life's good. It's good to be human. I mean, I appreciate life very much. That's why I'm talking about this subject called death, this thing we call death. There's a way out, you see. That's the whole good news. That's why the Bible got that name, gospel, the gospel. It, that translates to good news. That's good news. When you find out that this thing that we dread more than anything else and dread for our loved ones more than anything else is not real. Essentially, death in and of itself is a lie, a lie from the pit of hell because this evil one, this dark spirit, and all those that embrace it, wittingly or not, you see, that's the problem. A lot of people are embracing a dark spirit in our societies, making your life miserable in your local communities because they're on that same bandwagon with the dark forces. Some of them know it and some don't. And we can't judge them. We just have to love them. But things are going to change dramatically. I mean, listen, friends, the most dramatic change I can see is that money's got to be gone. Each and every form of money must be gone. That's it, because we cannot handle it. If we were going to learn to coexist with money, friends, we would have by now at this point in history. We cannot. So that is a huge departure, profound, dramatic departure from the status quo, from the way it is. Okay, I mean, it's, that's huge. But, you know, this death thing is still, you know, as much as it grieves me to see this master-servant paradigm that's been replete in our society, this is the overriding paradigm that runs the show. This is our, quote, reality that's been given to us that we must accept. Right, wrong, fair, just or not. We're told to comply, okay, the path of least resistance. You just go out, you have some common sense, you be smart about this now. It's about money. It's about making a lot of money. Get a good education so you can go out and get a good job, a good career, and make gobs of dough. You've got to do that because the dumbbells, the losers, those misfits, those pipe dreamers, they're on a fool's errand, those goody two-shoes, okay? They're just dumbasses. I, I don't know. You know, I won't want to talk about it too much, but, you know, you go with the winners, and the winners make a lot of money. They're successful as we define it. It has nothing to do with, you know, like in Daniel chapter 12 talks about bringing others to righteousness, you know, to where they repent and say, wow, you know, I think I see the light. We're all money lovers. It's not like, you know, I'm sitting here saying I'm not a money lover. Of course I am. God understands. You confess it, you admit it, but it's not good. And you should be like God and say, I can't wait till each and every form of that crap is gone. I mean, if all these other creatures that are far dumber than us, believe it or not, but far more mature, you know, they're not all hung up about whether you've got clothes on or not, are they? Not a one of them. The same with money. You see how we're distinct from all the others? Why? When we're so vastly more intelligent, <coughs> we got to deal with money. As if we can't figure it out. How to have plenty of everything so it's coming out our ears. And even if we want to play this game that these, the evil men say, okay, money, you got to play this game. We say you got to play. Don't ask us why. You just play it. It's cost of living. We're charging you. You understand how this works? 
We run the show. We decide the policy, the rules, the laws. And uh, it's got to go. It could go organically over time, but they won't let it through true capitalism, supply and demand, whereby your cost of living continued to go down. That's progress. Where your money's going up in worth because your cost of living's going down. You get it? And to a point where it's all irrelevant. We don't even care about money. We're all so financially secure with a few pennies, you know. It's like, who cares? I mean, we get what we want. We take, we can, you know, stuff to use. There could be giant car lots everywhere where we just go. I had the car I want to drive today, you know, and there's somebody there that loves to service them, take care of them. Look at Jay Leno, you know, getting his face burned off and playing with his cars. You guys love it. People love working. It, it, look, if the world's handed to you on a silver platter, my friends, you're going to feel very compelled to give back. That's normal. That's natural. It's unnatural to say, oh, I'd just be lazy and sit around the beach and drink mojitos, you know, or whatever. It's like, no. Yeah, how boring would that get? How quickly? Go ahead. Do what you want. I say people who especially should be financially free when they're young and vital, right? And, and when you're older, you feel more, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, I can settle down. It's easier. But, you know, before I was driven by my wild oats, you know, and I wanted to be out traveling the world, I got a daughter that loves to go all over the place. And, you know, she's always going somewhere, it seems like. And I tried to explain to her how I got that name. I traveled so much when I was younger, I kind of lost the bug. But, um... It came from this term travail, you know, a woman in labor. But um, listen, friends, there's a way out of death. It's through what Christ taught. It's believing. That's your faith. I mean, you see, you, it's an act of faith to pray. And you could pray anytime, anywhere. God is always there, all omnipresent, always. There's no way you can ever be away from God. You understand? So wherever you're praying, driving your car, sitting at your house, uh, kneeling on your face, you know, prostrate, whatever. Okay, God is with you. And it's an act of faith to pray because you'd be out of your freaking mind to pray if you didn't, you weren't showing a little bit of faith that, hey, maybe it's possible. And at least it's the best hope we have. It's like free insurance. Why wouldn't you take it? And, you know, when knowing that it's not hard, that God wants to be our friends. That's the relationship that God wants to have with us. That understands us better than we understand ourselves, and certainly better than any of our family can understand us. Even our spouses, our children, our best friends. No therapist or counselor shrink, nobody else, no pastor can understand you as good as the one that owns you. Isn't that good news? That understands your fear, very real fear, very valid fear of death. And beyond that, you know, what I what bothers me more than anything, I mean, yeah, okay, we can accept it. Live and let die and it's circle of life and all that. I can accept my mortality. Not that I can't. I mean, the idea of, you know, everything that I'm familiar with now being gone in a blank. Wow, that's a heavy trip. I mean, I'm going to a different realm, right? We're going to a different realm. And it's probably going to be a lot like when we came.